Hello and welcome back. This is Sherry with Heart and Soulful. I am back in the studio today uh, working on my vintage grunge journal. Uh, it's based on a ghost town called Bodhi and if you are just joining me for the very first time, welcome. If you have been following along, you may know that I had finished volume one. Uh, I ended up doing it in two volumes because it got so thick and there's a lot more I wanted to include. So each signature is, is uh, kind of a building or buildings kind of represent generic in a ghost town. And so the first one was uh, represented a house, a church, and a schoolhouse. So I am now working on my first signature of volume two, which is going to be the mercantile. So I don't know where I left off. I've been gone from this for about two weeks. And like I said, I, I had left a mess on my desk. If you watched my last video, I kind of just um, am catching up since I'm back. So I'm uploading the one right now on my stitchery since it's the end of March. And now I want to see where I left off on this. I did put a sneak peek in the last video, um, just kind of checking out what I had done. I, I was really working on this before I left. Um, I've been gone, like I said, almost two weeks. Um, I, my dad had a medical emergency, so I took off and um, he's getting better. So I'm back home. And I had started doing um, some little things to get ready for a video, and I think I wasn't too far off from doing it. I'm not organized at all, so I don't know if I'll be actually posting this one or not or redoing it. But I thought I'm just going to turn on the camera, see where I was, and see what I could maybe include uh, any kind of tutorial things that I did, kind of see where I'm at. So I'm going to remove my my first two um pages are really kind of just fluff. They're kind of my title page to the entire second volume. And then I just like this little piece of um, baking parchment, just uh, as kind of a little uh, buffer between this vellum page and my first decorated page. So uh, nothing fancy in there, but I'm going to set it aside because I tend to uh, end up ruining things if I leave them on my desk. Okay, so I had started working on um, doing things for the insides, and I'm also working on paper packs uh, for this volume uh, as I go. So it's taking me a little bit of time. I'm going to try to see if I can figure out where I left off. I'll remove this maybe center part because I, I did quite a bit on this first page. I started out my first my first folio, we'll call this, in my first signature. This page was actually a photocopy of, I've done now a few paper packs that I'm using in this. I've got the Distress Wallpaper Pack that's in my Etsy shop. I will put links to everything down below. Um, fresco Finish Backgrounds, and then Rustic Textures Volume 1. Um, that I've done. So I'm kind of using those in this journal. I'm uh, trying to make everything, well, most things, there's a few Tim Holtz things in here, but I'm trying to make my own ephemera and embellishments and background papers and all of that. So this page was actually a photocopy um, that I used from that paper pack. And then see if I can make that not fall. And then I noticed when I grabbed this this morning that I because it's a photocopy, I had dropped some water or something on it when I was maybe distressing the inside. And when you do that, you know, it kind of makes that ink spread. And I noticed that I had done that. It was probably when I was sprinkling water on something. But I kind of want to sprinkle a little bit more, even though it's grungy. Um, it kind of looks odd in that one spot. So I'm kind of tempted to just flick a little bit more on it. So I think I want to try that. I may totally mess it up. I'm going to remove this stuff just so I don't mess up everything, but you can see where my, those little water spots are. So I think I'm going to do more. And I think I want to put something down to protect a piece of scratch paper here. Um, I want to do something to protect maybe what else is in here just because I'm gonna be using water. So I don't wanna to do too much. I think I'll just spray some on my hand. Oop, there you go.
and just get a couple of little, do you see what that does when you have a photocopy? And then you get a little water on it. So I just, I wanna do just some dots here and there. I'm just, you know, getting my fingers wet with my spray bottle. I don't need too much, but that's good. Okay, so I think that'll work. Let me dry it real quick. Okay, I think I might keep that handy for myself and dry off my mat so I don't get more water than I want. Okay, now that is my, my very front page. And then I had went ahead and I made this, I had photocopied one of my photos onto vellum and onto um, paper. So I went ahead and decided to use both of these. And I also had made in the previous video, this piece of wood grain that is from a Tim Holtz 3D folder. And I'll show you that folder. Okay, I'm back. I had to stop and start restart my video, uh, getting rid of most of it because I could not remember where I what I had covered in the previous video and I'm a little disorganized. So I'm back. I've already glued this down, but I'm gonna kinda go through what I did and explain this back piece in case you haven't seen my previous videos where I've shown that. So this background piece is, I used the Sizzix 3D fades from Tim Holtz. This one's called Lumber. I'll put a link down below. And I used just regular craft card stock uh, to do my imprint, my embossing. So I think I just got this at Walmart, but any kind of craft card stock, I like that it's heavier. So I, you wanna use this, cut your piece um, to fit in the folder because it's only, you know, only so large. Um, so you cut, cut the piece and then you wanna use, um, you wanna get this damp. So you just use a spray, a spritzer and spray both sides of your little piece that you've cut. And then I use a Vagabond 2 to run it through and uh, Tim recommends running it through three times to get a nice deep imprint. So I use that. Um, I'm gonna be uh, including a bit of that in one of my kits, not this size. It's actually for uh, the background of another pocket. But I do have some wood grain uh, in my textures, in my Rustic Textures Volume 1. So there is there's a couple of wood grain pieces. So you could actually even just use that if you don't have a, another way to do wood grain. And then you, you know kind of colorize it the way that you want. To colorize mine, I because it was just on craft cardstock, I used some uh, vintage photo distress oxide and some walnut stain ink. Anything that you have kind of wood colors, I, I wanted to kind of give it that sunburnt wood look. So I, I did that. Um, on that piece, I decided I might as well make that a pocket. So I've just glued it on the three sides and attached it to my, uh, my page. I did drop it down a little bit so that maybe I'll remember that's a pocket. So just glue it down three sides and that is that page. I don't have any kind of things to stick in here yet, but I will work on that. So let me set that aside. Uh, let's see the next thing that I did. Okay, on the inside of this one, I think when I was laying out all my papers, I think I had pulled out that paper already. So I'll kind of show you what I did um, on this. I think I may have covered uh, what I was working with on this. I'm not sure if I did or not. I'm kind of doing my kit as I go and it will maybe have some changes um, as I fine tune things and actually use all the parts. So this was basically my piece of paper. Okay, and then I needed to kind of cover the inside because it was just a photocopy and it, so it's just white. You could print on the other side, um, whatever you want, and then you don't have to worry about covering that up. But I decided I might as well make that a pocket. So if I haven't covered it, I think I did in the last one, but this is from a, one of my very favorite paper packs, which I have to put my eyes on here. It's Park Lane Papery. I love it because it's lots and lots of pages of maps, text, and ledgers. So I just took a piece of, they're eight by eight. So I took a piece of my eight by eight ledger paper 
and then I just wanted to make it old and grungy. So I've used um, instant coffee and different sprays and spritz and that just to kind of really grungy it up. Uh, that's why you see this little granular. I really like using instant coffee for things like this. Um, if you just, if you want that powdery, you know, kind of look to show up. So I've done that. I did back it with just part of a piece of um, book page that I had been using to wipe up my table, just to give it a little thicker um, at, at the edge of that pocket because this is just kind of like a copy paper weight paper. So I, I haven't glued it down yet. I'll just glue down three sides, but I'm gonna wait because I may, if I just, I don't know what I'm doing here yet and I may want to run it through my sewing machine. So I think I'll wait till I know about that back half. And then for this side, I was going to make this a pocket, and then I changed my mind. So I, I have, this is going to be in the kit, and I'll show you that page. So this background was a, basically a copy onto cardstock of that wood grain, the same wood grain that is made with this folder. So it's just a piece I had. Again, I, I'm including that. I'll show you the page. It might change, but I'm show, I'll show it to you now. Um, this is my first, my first page and you can see the colors different. I, had, I printed out, this one is an enhanced colorized one. I may go with the grungier one. I have got them both in my computer. I haven't decided yet. So I do kind of like how, how this looks because you're going to go back and use other inks and things anyway, I think to, you know, grunge it up even more maybe. So it has the flaps. So that if you wanted to make this a pocket, I don't have them on here because this is this is my original where I actually stacked it and then I scanned it to here. So I, I'm not sure. This this may change a little bit, but you could have it be a cop, uh, pocket or you just cut those off and it could be a flap like I did and you would just round the corners. I went ahead and did another one that's just blank so that you can have it just for any time you want to maybe embellish it with other things. And then I, I included these elements separately too, in case you want to, them to have that stacked look like mine does, um, you know, and age the edges or, you know, I tore mine a little bit more, that kind of thing. That way you can actually make your own collage and add other things. So I did that and I, I went ahead and put it on a background of one of my fresco finishes. Um, I could have done it on white paper so that you don't use as much ink, but I always like to have these little scraps to use as background for if you're going to put a quote or something like that. So I went ahead and made it be a pattern just so that you'd have a printed scrap. And then I decided, like I said, to make this a flap. So um, what I've done on it then is uh, just aged around it rounded the corners. Uh, I went and got a piece of my rusted um, grungy fabric. I do have a piece in my textures kit of fabric and I used it again elsewhere. Um, it doesn't look exactly like this actually. What ended up in my kit looks more like this. So you can print this out onto fabric and you have grungy fabric or I also, in another kit, have rust, a rusted fabric kit that you could print onto fabric and then, you know, have your grungy fabric. Or you could just take a piece of muslin or anything like that, just cotton fabric, and just dirty it up with your distress oxides and that sort of thing if you don't want to go to the trouble of rusting fabric. So I put a piece of that on the edge. And then I had a little piece of vintage lace. I had originally cut it the full length, but I decided I liked that kind of ripped up, staggered look to make it more the length of this piece of paper. Um, those were all aged with walnut stain, probably. Um, I stitched a zigzag and a straight stitch. When, if you're not used to using a sewing machine and um, are worried about it being wonky, what I like to do is do it intentionally. So either do two lines like I did on this one, um, two or three lines even and make them crooked so that it looks intentional uh, or like I did here a zigzag and a straight stitch just to make it look messy. I had already punched the holes um, to do some just hand stitching along this edge so I ended up just using some embroidery thread because it was nice and thick and a dark color 
and um, just left that as kind of a flap. I used um, my rusted fabric again uh, just to make it a really sturdy hinge that'll, you know, could sustain a lot of wear and tear. So it's just glued on and glued more on this side, you know, so that I could leave as much room as possible to right here. I'm sorry if I'm not in the frame very good. So on this back, the lines you see there um, aren't really defined, but they were made with my handmade cardboard line stamp. If you have, you know, you might have a line stamp. I could have used that one, but it, you know, it wasn't quite long enough, even though the width was okay. Um, but I decided just to use this one because it's really grungy. You just take a piece of cardboard, um, take off one side so that you have the corrugated lines, and then about four coats of gesso will keep your ink from uh, soaking into the cardboard. And then they're black because I've just been using black ink. So, you know, you just ink it up and just press it down. It didn't, you know, cover completely, um, but I don't mind that because I just want kind of the hint of it there. And then I decided to do um, kind of a little flippy, floppy thing here. So that's going to be glued three sides. And I want to leave this loose because you can write on this side, then you can write on this side. Um, and then even here if you want. So I, I decided to just do a little tuck in the corner so that you can write on all of this, um, but then have a place to tuck a couple of cards. And I have made a couple of cards. I haven't done anything too fancy to them yet. I kind of, you know, start in steps as far as embellishing, kind of get the bases done, and then I can add to if I want or leave them kind of simple. So this card is another potential piece in my kit that I will have. And it's already taken on a couple of different iterations. Oh, actually, this isn't the one. I have another one. It's very similar to this. I use the same background, so it probably will change. Um, but I have the clock faces in it. But then you, you can kind of see that same little spot. Um, so I have two. Uh, like I said, they're probably going to change. Okay, I don't know where it went. I've got so much mess here. I guess it was kind of part of that one. Anyway, so I've been making um, some collages. Don't know how they're going to end up for the final kit, but uh, this was one where I had later layered a couple of clock faces that I had um, into a collage. So that's just a simple card I've started that can go here. Um, this little tuck is made with another 3D Sizzix folder. This one is called intertwine and I just like that it was kind of a basket weave um, you know mercantile you're gonna see lots of like barrels and boxes and crates and baskets and things to hold grains and different things so I thought it would be fun to have some vintage looking basket and I do have some vintage baskets that I could probably take pictures of but I thought it would be fun to just use this um, this 3d fade I've been doing a little bit experimenting with different weights of paper and things. Uh, for my grungy book, I can still use these parts, but I wanna show you what happens different weights of paper and what you can maybe do to them. I embossed a piece of just heavy cardstock. Again, you want to spritz it with water, um, but even then, uh, I think the craft cardstock is just a little more flexible maybe. Um, because even with that, doing it three times, I would get kind of breaking in my paper. For a basket, especially an old basket, you can see in this one, this is actually just thinner paper. Um, it's maybe okay if it has that kind of broken look, but you might not want that depending on what you're using it for. So I would recommend a heavier cardstock, spritz it with water both sides, and then maybe don't run it through three times, maybe twice is enough. Um, to get it to, you know, imprint nicely without being um, breaking your, your weave. I have not watched a Tim Holtz video on using this one, so there may be other tips I'm not aware of. I also tried to do it on um, some paper that I had ordered. I didn't colorize this at all. It is printed double-sided to look like vintage parchment, and I had bought a pack of that on Amazon, so it's only probably 20, uh, 28 weight maybe. Um, so it, it did break uh, quite a bit, but I kind of liked the color of it, so I was seeing if it would work. If I glue this to something else, it's fine, um, because I don't really mind it having that 
the little breaks in it because then it just makes it look older. So I may use those for something. I did take a piece that I had done on cardstock um, and I attached it um, to a piece of old book page just to even make it thicker and then just played around with some different oxides and things just to kind of try to get it to look like an old basket. So these, th those were just me experimenting and playing around. So I just ended up taking a little piece that wasn't broken of one of my pages. I liked the color of it, so I'm just using it as a little tuck. So I've just glued it down on two sides there. So I had that. And then I had originally in, in the last video where I was kind of pulling together papers and things, I really liked how this vellum looked right inside here. I thought it was going to be a pocket kind of like that. So I did still want to use this, um, but I'm thinking if I have this glued down, if you follow me here, then it's kind of a, a flip flap thing. So to keep this one kind of stayed down, I thought I could use that little tuck and it sort of locks it in there like that kind of thing. And then I still get to see that. So I went ahead and turned this into a pocket too. I used um, that piece of vellum that I like. This is from a Tim Holtz pack. I think it's the wallflower um, paper pack in vellum. And then for the inside, even though you can't really see it through, um, I wanted to use another piece of something that I didn't have to already, you know, age up. It was already kind of there. So I used um, a piece from my, this is from the um, Rustic Textures Volume 2. There's one piece of fabric here. So I used that for um, the card, for the backing of that card. And then it gave me that thickness too. And that's just printed, this one was printed on the Epson uh, 44 pound premium presentation mat, I believe. Um, so that's that one. And then I just use a piece of coffee stain paper on this side just to make another pocket. So it's not a very thick pocket, but that way I have room to add things to this. Um, and without, you know, bulking up my book too much. I may or may not embellish those more. Um, I kind of like leaving this plain so you can write on this too. So I've just um, notched those out. This one was with a one inch um, circle punch. And then this one I did with an inch and a half. So I'll tuck that there. So for now, you know, I'm good with those. I could actually just glue this in if I didn't think I wanted to stitch anything um, and be done with this except for whatever I want to do here. So I'm thinking I'm going to kind of wait on, on doing that. Then the next page that I have in here, let's see where I was, um, was it going to be my little short small page um, to kind of stagger those. So I think I can do some things to this one today. Um, this one I actually had already gone and started that too. I think I left off kind of here. So let me move that out of the way and kind of work with these two together since they kind of go together. So those will go there. So for this one, this was just a piece of uh, tea stained ledger paper. I haven't done anything else to that except I had that one piece. I think I had already pulled it out. Um, and this, I think this was also from um, the vellum pack also. So I think that's where that came from. And I just wanted to make it, because I like it, it's vellum, but I wanted to not waste the fact that you can write on this. So I just wanted to hinge it. So I've just used a couple of pieces. This is like a ticket um, washi tape. And then this one is kind of like a ledger washi tape. And it keeps kind of wanting to come up, so I think I might have to glue that down a little bit. So let's see. Normally I wouldn't want to use this wet on the vellum, but I think if I just kind of do a little bit, that way it won't keep peeling up. Okay, we're gonna see. I think why it's doing that is because maybe, yeah, that might work. Okay, that way you can still write on that. So I'll maybe do more to that later. And then when I started this one, this was my original, one of my original um, fresco finishes. I'm using the original. I had folded it in half, but because of what I decided to do on the front of it, I needed it to be a little bit wider, so I've just refolded it. And then this was one of my original fresco finishes also um, that I had done on book page. So I was using it just as kind of a, a liner here so that I could make them both be pockets if I want. So let me see how this is going to go together before I glue. 
anything because I want to kind of see again if I'm going to want to stitch anything. So I know what I want on the front of this. This is something I've been working on. So this is going to be a part of another little paper pack if I have it printed. Okay, and I printed this. This I'm thinking is probably going to be done like it is. Um, it's going to be a page of embellishments that you can fussy cut. So um, I used a, uh, a photo that I took of the front of a, um, a spool cabinet. Now, if you don't have, um, if you're looking for vintage things and maybe you just don't want to buy a whole paper pack or that kind of thing, I'll share with you kind of what I do. I, had, I have a lot of stuff. Um, that I've collected all all these things are things I actually have these two things were photos um, and I actually have some we were uh, in our travels over the last month we were at a place a little restaurant in Placerville I think that had lots of vintage and antique items to decorate their restaurant and so I kind of walked around and took some pictures that's not where I got this one but it gave me the idea Go to an antique store. Not all of them will let you take pictures, but um, if they do, or if you can, or if you can sneak them or whatever, um, you can take pictures of vintage things and then, you know, um, use those as embellishments, um, you know, make stickers or, or not, just cut them out, whatever, depending on your skill level. I'm not a graphic designer and I'm just learning all this stuff, but I took even um, vintage spools that I have um, a vintage ruler, clock face. These are um, some barrels I have out in my greenhouse. And then you can adjust the sizes of them. This this was actually a coffee grinder and it's, it's like life size. I mean, a person could stand there. Um, it's really big. Uh, I had taken a photo of it um, in Bodie through a window. That's why the quality of the photo isn't very good. But um, you, you can take photos like that and then um, make them embellishments. I have these kind of grouped together because I'm going to make them a pocket. Um, I also did this one individually because it could be, um, you know, an, a tuck or the cover of a little booklet or something. You'll see what, I, what I'm doing with these. So this is the first one I want to show. And I have cut it out and then folded those over because I want to make it a little tuck spot here um, to tuck something in. So I think I'm going to go ahead and I think I'm ready to officially glue that down because I have some of the other things that I want to put on there also. So I think I'm going to glue that first and just bite the bullet. Um, and it would probably be easier if I have this already glued on. This is my heart, the problem I always have, trying to decide when to actually glue things because not knowing what I'm going to do down the line. I don't want to um, do something premature, but I think I'm going to just go for it. And it'll be what it is. I like to sit to do these things, so uh, just a little glue. And again, I'm just using my art glitter glue for this because it dries fast, it's strong, holds everything. So um, I'm gonna just do this. If I find my center, kind of, sort of. I'm talking to myself, sorry. Okay, so that's going to be a little tuck, and I like that I have the gussets on that because it's going to give me a little extra, a little extra room in there because I'm going to put a booklet. Okay, and then I had made these. I'm not going to do anything more with them right now, I don't think. But I had made these uh, two spools. These are in the uh, kit also, and if you notice. Um, I made them kind of a mirror image instead of being the same because they're not perfect. And I thought I might want to make one a teeny tiny notebook. You know, um, it could be a it could be a flip up from here, or it could maybe an eyelet and it could go like this. So I don't know yet what I'm going to do, 
but that was my thinking behind making those two spools um, kind of a mirror. So I put those there. They could also just be left as a card, you know, and write something on them. So that's as far as I got that. And then I made a little, this little um, dictionary of needlework. This I got off of the Graphics Fairy, um, and you can use those. I, I finally joined the thing so that I can get more than just the free stuff um, and then use them commercially. So I included that in this collage. And I decided to do this one just because I'm learning things. This is actually my mannequin, same mannequin, but I'm just learning different things you can do on um, Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop, that kind of thing. So I'm kind of just playing around. This is actually a ruler from um, a ruler sheet that I haven't shown you, but I have a whole collage of rulers um, that I made a long time ago. And so I just used a piece of that uh, too in that collage. So I'm just, I'm trying to use my things and learn learn how to do this. This is from my uh, wallpaper pack. Um, this is from uh, Graphics Fairy. The burlap is from my textures. So, and then this is actually the same, this same piece, um, but I just altered it and changed the size. So I'm just kind of playing around learning how to do um, digital collage and that kind of thing. So this one, I kind of tried to lay these out so that they would be good, um, maybe card size. So you could, I actually just cut it along there for this little notebook. So it's just kind of a matchbook style. So I had that laid out so that I would have a back for it. Um, and then there was enough to fold over to do that. And then I wanted a staple just like a matchbook would be. So I just used my um, tiny attacher. This one's a Heidi Swap one. And I had this idea, um, you can kind of see how mine are grungy. I, I was being impatient. I had already stapled them on before I thought, I need to make those rusty. So I kind of used some sandpaper to rough them up a little bit. And then used, um, I found this little instant rust. It's kind of, I think it's the same solution that I use for Modern Masters because it's blue. I think it's the same. Um, so I will put the Modern out. I don't even know if you can get this one anymore. I kind of have a feeling that it may be the same company. This is just really, really super old um, that I've had. So I had the idea after I did this um, to instead, and I don't know, maybe somebody already does this. Maybe somebody already makes these. If not, Tim Holtz should be watching um, because I think somebody should in, invent these. So these aren't fully grungy, but I decided the smart thing to do was if I'm going to always be using my uh, staples and I want them to look grungy, I might as well grunge the whole strip before I um, put it in there. And then that way, every time I staple, they're grungy. So I don't know if somebody already makes um, staples that are grungy, but you can do that yourself. So I don't know if you'll be able to see this. They're kind of grungy. You still see a little bit of silver, but that's okay. You know, I just want them to not be bright, shiny kind of thing. So to do this, I took my emery board, or you can take, you know, just a little sandpaper, sanding block, whatever, and rough that up because most of this kind of stuff is, you know, it's just base metal, but it may have some kind of coating on it, um, you know, to keep it from rusting. So you want to kind of give it some tooth. So I just kind of sand that off. And then I used that instant rust. Um, you could probably put it in some apple cider vinegar, you know, if you don't have the chemical, um, and, and rust that way uh, just to kind of get it old and grungy. So that way now all my staples in my little thing here are going to be rusty. So I just thought that was a fun tip. Now, I may not be the first person to have come up with that, but I thought I did. So there you go. So I had already, like I said, stapled them. So mine's not the best, but it's just a little thing. And then um, some of my coffee stain papers, just some scraps. They don't all have to be the same size. And then I, before I put them in here, I ran them through my sewing machine with no thread in them. And then that way it can be, you can tear these off. They're perforated then if you want. Okay, so that's a little notebook. Um, and I just like that it was a little needlework thing so that um, it's going to go here in my little drawer. Okay, so I love that. Um, and that's why I'm kind of 
tempted to do some stitching on this before it goes anywhere, right along that spine maybe. So I may go do that real quick. And then if I do that, do I want it on the inside too? See, I almost think I don't. So I may go just do this piece and stitch it along there. And then I want her kind of looking like she's hanging out there, sitting there. So maybe let me go stitch this real quick. Okay, so I've got my little stitching. I think I'll cut this one a little bit. That will go there. And then I can glue her on here. Maybe I will just go ahead and glue this down now that I did my little stitching. Because you could use these just to write on. I don't know that I, I may glue something on. I don't know. But I may make those like a little leave that open a little tuck and that way you have this these two pages to still write on uh, if you want if i end up not doing anything okay so i think i will go ahead and put some glue on this Okay. That will go like that. Okay, and she will sit there. Okay, and I think I already went over her with some there's my dauber with some vintage photo, but let's just, again, for good measure. And if you can't get your dauber into little spots like I can't seem to, I like to keep these little tiny eyeshadow brushes and those will work well. I think I'll use a darker color though. And that way you can get in all the little tiny corners Well, if I had done her before, I didn't do a very good job. You can also colorize this, you know, if you want to have her dress a color or whatever using colored ones. But I'm kind of keeping all of mine just looking. Um, I have some color in my journal, but not too much. I'm kind of just trying to keep it mostly just really grungy. Okay, so I think, let's not put this there, so I don't glue everything together, maybe even do this. See how I don't trust myself? Um, but I kind of want it to look like she's sitting on that. So maybe right there. So, so kind of. And then actually I can do here too. Let's see. I think I need to leave her loose at the top. I don't want to glue that down because then if I glue her up top, then I can't fit my book. So I want to make sure and I only glue, only glue her to the pocket, to this little bottom part. Okay.
Okay, so I think that's good. And I'll just, I'm gonna just stick these in here for now. Again, I don't know what I'll do, with, if anything, with those little spools. So they may stay like that. Okay. Yay, I'm coming some, getting somewhere. Getting somewhere. There. Okay, now what else do I have? I don't know how I'm doing on time here. I may come back to this only because my wa walking buddy went to an early lunch date and she's going to be texting me to go for a walk. But this, I think, is going to go here. Um, I think was my plan. I don't really remember again because I left. But I think that was what I was thinking. And then this goes inside of here. Okay. So this, maybe I have time to do that. I don't know. We'll see. I'll start, and if I have to pause, I will pause. Oh, I don't really like the back side of her light like that. Hmm. So I need to grunge that up a lot more because I don't like that. She's too, she's too white. So if I had been smart, I guess I would have paid attention to that ahead of time and maybe covered her with another fabric or... Um, that would have been nice to like glue her to a piece of fabric and then just fussy cut around. That would have been nice. But because I've now glued her down, I'm just gonna do this. And I'm just using, this as vintage photo. I may mix also a little bit of that. Um, the walnut stain too, just so it's not one color. But that's a fix. Okay, that will be better. So for this, this I just made this little um, coin envelope, a manila coin envelope. You can buy them, I think. I don't know how what standard sizes are. Um, so I was trying to make mine, you know, fit with uh, on my page for one, and then also the little card that I have as part of my um, of this little kit. So. I'm not sure about the size of this. I don't know what I, I keep adjusting things, but that is from that. And then I just used um, Vintage Photo to um, kind of give it a little more dimension in its color. I used a stamp on the back. I used this one and you can see I didn't do a very good job. I stamped it twice and not in the same spot. I don't have one of those um, little things that you use. Those little, I need to get one of those because I think that would help. But I used I used this one off of um, this Tim Holtz collection. I'll put links to everything down below. Um, so anyway, I wanted to make my envelope be able to fit that and fit on the back of my page. Okay, so to do this, um, I didn't really have a pattern. Um, I was trying to create one, but I my skills just aren't there yet. You know, I, I'm really kind of just teaching myself and from videos. So I decided the easiest thing to do was just to take regular manila um, paper. This is really thin manila paper. If you have um, maybe a recycled manila envelope, you can cut it up and do this. Um, and I, I'm hoping I remember my sizes because I ended up um, having to leave before I got an actual pattern made. Okay, so I do remember that I folded it in half. And then I used my glue stick to glue those together just to make it thicker. And I'm going to need a credit card or something to squeegee it, sort of. So get lots of glue. And I'm just starting at the fold. And I do this in stages because it the dry glue so uh, the glue dries so fast. So I'm just going to do.
that little bit and then continue on until I have it all glued down. Okay, so now I have a thicker piece of manila that will be um, good enough for my envelope. And then I'm going to use my Recollections um, little trimmer uh, score, scoring tool to cut. Actually, I'm going to go over to my guillotine, I think, if I can find it and cut this. So I need to see what my measurement was because I don't remember. I think I left it. I think I left this because it looks like if I fold that over, that's just right. And then I think, I think it's this. Okay. So if I cut off two and a half inches, then the remainder is the size of my envelope. Okay, so that that manila paper, I should have measured a piece before I started. Let me grab a piece because I don't know that it's eight and a half by 11. It might be. So let's see, this was, no, it wasn't. See, it's nine by 12, I think. Okay, and I got this just at the office supply, like Office Max, Staples, something like that. In the children's section, um, they have manila paper, so it's nine by 12. Okay, so keep that in mind. I started with a nine by 12 paper and then I'm going to, I folded it in half, okay? And then I'm gonna cut off two and a half inches and that's gonna leave me a scrap that I could have to be a card. So I'm gonna go cut this off two and a half inches. Okay, it's starting to all come back to me now, but I think um, what I did was, when you fold this in half, if you don't get it perfect, you have imperfect edges. I took just the littlest sliver to, you know, using my folded edge as my as my straight edge. I cut just the teeniest little bit off of one side so that when I, you know, cut it, I, I have straight edges and I cut off two and a half inches. So whatever this is, let's see, this is now almost six and a half. Oops, sorry about that. Okay, so six and a half by should be six because it was 12 inches, so six by six and a half. Okay, so then I need to um, see what my center was. About three inches for the middle. So I'm gonna score uh, this one I scored at inch and three quarters. I'm just gonna kind of center it. And I know I want an inch and three quarter and then Inch and three quarter inch and three now. Okay, so that will leave me when I when I'm three in the middle here. That inch and three quarters, you know, will give me a little bit of an overlap to glue my envelope closed. So I'm going to make my score. And I learned something as I was doing this. Now I'm it's all coming back to me now. Um, for whatever reason, when I have this here, I have a shadow, and my shadow ends up right where my thing needs to be the shadow from this but it might not work that way for everyone there is a little line on your score tool that you can line up with your pencil mark and it doesn't have to be exact anyway um, on this one I had pushed too hard and that's why my paper broke it's kind of like craft cardstock you know it's kind of softer paper and then get the other side kind of lined up there and score. Do it a little bit over. Okay, and then I'm gonna make two more marks. I'm gonna write these on this so we don't forget. So this measurement was, let's say, about six and a half wide, and it ended up being six this way. Okay, and then from here to here is an inch and three, oops, an inch and three quarters. Okay, and this is an inch and three quarters. And then this is three inches. Okay, and then now I wanna make some score lines for my other little flaps. Okay, so I wanna do one line for my bottom flap half an inch okay 
half inch. That's my bottom flap. And my top flap is gonna be one inch. So I'm gonna make a mark at one inch. Okay. So I'm gonna score my And again, you know, I'm telling you these measurements for this envelope. Um, and you'll see it, it became critical for me because I was using a crop dial to set my eyelet. And I don't have the big bite, which means I only have so much room. Um, and I'm using a specific little closure that I made. And I'll show you why it became critical here in a second. So that's going to be close enough, I think. Okay, so I've got my flap, my bottom flap, my sides all scored, which made it way easier to fold these. Okay. So again, I'm going to go over these measurements so you can write them down. Six and a half by six. Okay. And then score it inch and a quarter on either side inch and three quarters on either side and this should be roughly three inches then and then you have it will overlap so i can glue that okay and then an inch for my flap and a half inch for the bottom flap okay so now i i want to make it look like an actual envelope here so the bottom is not as critical getting that cut but I want to um, take off these parts. So where's my scissors, little scissors? Yeah. So you can use your cutter or you can use little scissors. And I'm just gonna cut that half an inch and that three quarter inch off on both sides. And I might as well go ahead and do that same thing on the top. Okay, so that's what it looks like. But then I want that little rounded bit there. So I'm gonna fold it without creasing it. And I'm gonna do that right here. So you can just eyeball it if you, you know, you don't really need it to be perfect. I'm just gonna round that a little bit. That way when I, I do this and this, it looks like my coin envelope. I may have even done this little edge, you know, if you want, but I, I don't I don't think you need to. Actually what I will do is it'll make it a little easier. If I do this, just cut a little bit, not too much on the bottom, but just make it a little angled. That way when I fold these over, you know, I don't have too much of a gap there, but I don't worry about this fold intruding on, on those two pieces. It, it makes it less bulky. So I have that, and then I need to do the top too. So the top, I'm going to start with this, and this. And then I could, if I want to make these the same, just fold this in half. And I'm gonna cut again at an angle, but on this one, I really needed to be specific about how deep I cut that because of where these are gonna place. So you can see I used a specific thing that I'll show you. I made these are part of the kit and they needed to be a certain distance, you know, to not interfere with my flap. But my crop a dial will only go so far. So if you don't know what a crop a dial is, it's from We Are Memory Keepers, and it's a way to punch and set your eyelet with this one thing. But what happens, I have a little bit more room here, but I only have, you know, so much room to get that in there to make my hole. And so I, I wanted it as far as I could, as far down as I could get it here. So in order to do that, I needed to um, cut this or at... Uh, at half an inch down here, make my angle half an inch from the top, if that makes sense. 
So what I wanna do to make sure I get that right is I'm gonna take this is the part I'm cutting off and I'm gonna measure my half an inch just so I, I know I can't go past, I mean, I, I need to go at least that much. And then I can fold these together again without creasing them because I don't want a crease down my front of my envelope. And now I'm going to cut from that half an inch up to that corner, if you can see that. And that's going to be where that angle is. Um, so I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. You could draw a line if you want or use a cutter, but I'm just going to go like that. Okay. You see how that works? Now it looks like an envelope, an official one. Okay, and then I just want to round those corners too. So I'm going to go ahead, same thing. Try not to crease it too much. And then just kind of round that however I want. Let's see. There, and then you have a coin envelope. Okay, so that's, you know, that's just one way to do it if you don't have, if I looked on Cricut, you know, to see if there was a pattern. Um, I didn't find just a simple one like I liked. So to me, this was just an easy way. You don't have to have any fancy machines and you just uh, can make your envelope. Now, I'm gonna use double-sided tape, I think, on this. And I don't know if it matters which way it goes. I kind of like it that way and then it looks like that's more the center. So I'll put a piece of tape on this one. My tape was a little bit wider. That was quarter inch tape because my, my overlap was quarter of an inch. But if you don't have that much room, then it won't, you know, that won't work. So you could use just glue it too. Um, and I probably will on this one just because I have this notch and I don't want, you know, tape in there. So I think I will just go along the top of this. Okay, so glue or tape, either one will work. And also, you know, if you want, you can do this out of decorative paper if you're doing something else, or, um, you know, you can embellish it, decorate it up however you want. I'm gonna leave mine plain on the this side because I'm gonna glue it down. Um, and I actually may even only glue it top and bottom or something, and then it can have another little something tucked in there if I want. Okay, so my next little part, oh, and actually I should have done this before, okay, which I didn't. Um, is you can before you glue it together is do your do your aging you can see I used a little bit of vintage photo on there um, to do that so uh, I want to maybe do that because I want to use this one for something and I can erase my measurement and my marks but this way if you do it when it's open it it might be a little easier and I'm not going to worry about my back side because I'm going to glue it down. Just want to make that look older and grungier. But I do want to include my flap. Now I need to make my little punchy things. So this card, you know, this was from the leftover scrap that I cut away. You know, I had to shorten it, but you could always fold it in half and make it a card or whatever. Um, but it just, it worked out then that the little bit I had left was 
can fit in here. It's just a little, a little card. And that one, I haven't done anything to it. I just rounded my corners. Um, this is the two layers, you know, because I cut it after. And then this stamp, again, was one that was on this um, Tim Holtz uh, collection. This is called School Desk. Um, I'll put a link below, but it's just kind of, you know, industrially looking. So that can go there. So uh, hopefully this one would still fit, and it would. But the next thing that I did was to um, put these this little closure on it. Um, now, you know, manila envelopes have those, like, um, more like a brad thing, um, and then like a reinforced hole. So you could do something like that, you know, and close it with that. But um, I liked these I had made out of the spools. So I have on this sheet, I have larger ones. And I tried to do these so that you can cut them out with a punch. So like these are a one inch punch. And I'm not sure the size, this doesn't have it written on there, but I think it's like three eighths, I wanna say. Um, no, it's more like five eighths. So this is like a five eighths, little bit, you know, one notch bigger than a half an inch um, punch. So I tried to do these so that, you know, you can just see it through there and punch those out. Obviously you have to cut this so you're close enough, you know, to the edge of these. But what I like to do, um, a, a couple of tips that I want to suggest. So when I laid this out, I laid it out again so that you could, you know, use a guillotine and just cut this off and cut this strip off. And then you can take those uh, parts that you might want thicker than this. And before you punch them out, uh, add another layer of cardstock so that they're thicker. Um, you know, some heavier, these are a different size, but just some heavier cardstock. Um, Cause I think I used, you know, like two layers or three layers maybe. So just get it as sturdy as you want it to be, you know, before you punch them out. And then the other thing I like to do is that center hole punch. I believe the size of it is a standard um, hole punch, but you need to remember what size your eyelets are. And mine are a little bit smaller. So I needed to make my, my holes in here the size of my eyelets so the thing i would suggest is if you have a crop -a dial and you're going to use a crop -a dial i used uh, my eyelets are kind of in between these two sizes so if i make them the small one i usually have to like force it the big one makes it a little bit bigger but it goes in easy and it's not too big it will still hold eyelets so i used the bigger side and my suggestion is before you punch out the big circle, punch the little circles. So it's just easier while it's all on one piece. So go and punch your centers out and then take your, your bigger punch, whichever one is the right size, and then punch your circles out. And then you'll have a whole bunch of those already, re already thicker, already um, punch the center and all of that. And then all you need to do is uh, Use your vintage photo or something and kind of grunge at the edges. And then, you know, you'll be able to get this little beauty in there. Um, because the problem is, for envelopes, if you use that other setter, which I don't think I have it here on my desk, but I've used it before. It's, it's just kind of a manual thing. It's more like, this is not it, but it's a kind of thing where you, you hammer it. You can't get, you're supposed to hammer from the other side. And once you have this envelope, you can't hammer from that side, right? So you'd have to put it in upside down. And I don't like that. So um, I like to use this for envelopes, but it's just kind of critical, this measurement, you know, how far you can get this in. Wouldn't matter, but I want my flap, you know, to not run into that. So I just kind of eyeballed it once I had it to that point, you know, I went and did this one exactly where it needed to go and you want to punch it in where it's um where it's doubled just for extra it's sturdy and then when i do mine um, i put the string in there first you can put the string top or bottom wherever you want it but i just use some of my grungy kitchen twine that i have i keep a bunch of it already kind of dyed and taken apart so it's this thick and then um, stick it through the hole before you put your little um, your little thing in there, uh, this one I may not have done that way. I try to remember. 
If you do that, then when you punch it, um, your thread will be captured in that metal and it won't pull out. If you don't do that, if you don't remember to do that, uh, then you just, the other reason that that's kind of good is it will leave that gap that's the thickness of your thread already in there and it won't be too tight when you go to wrap around. If you forget and you go ahead and you put that in and you haven't put your string in, it might be a little tight against the paper. So it, not the end of the world, you can usually still fit that in there. But um, if you put the string first, even if you don't put it through the hole to be captured by the metal, at least you have it the correct thickness away from the paper um, and then your wear and tear won't be as bad. So you do that and again, this one, you just you don't wanna do it too tight when you do it so that it, you, you can fit your string in there. So it's just a cute little fun thing. You can make a bunch of those up ahead of time, which I think I probably will do because they're just gonna be handy and then just you know decorate them to fit whatever theme you're doing. So I think that's just gonna go on that. Um, and like I said, I think I might, this is gonna be a tuck. I could just do it top and bottom, like I said, so that it's a, a little kind of secret pocket again. But I don't know if I'm even gonna do that. This is gonna get pretty thick. So um, I think I'll just go ahead and glue that on because I could, I could put things inside. So I'm just gonna sadly cover up that pretty piece of paper, but I could always, too, hinge it. You know, I could do that. If I hinged it, then I have now another little writing spot and another little writing spot. I think maybe I'll do that. Hinge it somehow. So I probably want to hinge it from the inside again so that I don't interfere with anything else. So I think I'll take a piece of my fabric, if this will fit. That's good enough, huh? Just that worked out. And I think I'll go more on, I think I'll just glue that to that. And that way it, it saves me a, a writing space. Okay, so I think I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do it. So let's see, I'll go. And this would be cute if I would have thought about it, but I didn't. This is why it's better if I don't do this on camera, is it would have been really cute um, to have stitched something onto this first. So I may, I may do something and add it and then just glue it on top. But it would be cute to embellish that, I think, a little bit. So I might, to keep this where I want it to be, and glue and dry and all of that. Maybe clamping that would be smarter. It's like adding another little page. So you see how I end up getting a little bulky by the end because I keep adding, adding, adding places to put things. Oh, and you know, I wasn't thinking. I was, I was doing this. It's going to go on the whole other side because it's going to go like this. So I think what I wanted to do is I wanted to put it there. Is it too late? Sherry, 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 quite contrary. And I don't know what's gonna go on there, but now something's gonna have to hide that. But that's okay. So now, what did I do? I wanna go here as another thing. But that'll still work, I can do that. Is that right? And then this goes here. Yes, that's what I did. So now I need to, whenever I do here, is going to have to hide that. So we'll do, we'll deal with that later. But I want to put this, I think I want to just center it on there. Okay. Well, I'm glad I caught it before it totally dried. That's how I roll, right? 
Okay. Let's go here. Now I'm going to definitely need my walk. Now it's where I wanted it to be. Which it wouldn't really matter if I left it on the other one. It's just that I'm kind of I'm kind of doing these in themes even within this signature. So I'm starting out with kind of obviously the the woman shopper in the mercantile. I want to do um some kid related things like the candy counter, you know, that kind of stuff. Ribbons, I don't know. Toys, old vintage toys. It would be cute to have just one page that has some of those things, which I have not even thought about yet. Um, but I'm thinking that might be a fun one. And then I want to end like with the men and the hardware and that kind of thing. So this will be my next. So really, I've kind of only gotten through the beginning of the, you know, female part, whatever. Okay, I think I'm getting somewhere now, finally. Well, I think that's a good start. Um, at least I have something put together, and I now I know where I left off, and I can get working on the rest of this signature. Hopefully it won't take me so long. My plan is to be here all month. Even for two months would be really good, but I may I may head back for uh, my dad's birthday's right two days after Mother's Day, so I may do that. But otherwise, I think I will stick around and have some fun with this and get, get somewhere with it. So um, I hope you enjoy your rest of your day. I'm going to go for a walk. Now go make something. Bye.